Yes, yes, yes. We are live and direct. It's your boy Hakeem Green, channel live, live and direct. BDP all day, every day. All we do is spark Madism over here on Madism TV, regularly scheduled interview platform where we bring the hottest, livest, most legendary hip hop personalities, activists, teachers, scholars, practitioners, politicians, government officials. We we got a little something for everybody over here at Madison TV. You know, we try to cover all the bases, give you that perspective that only real true hip hoppers can give you. You know what I mean? And when I say that, we talk about East Coast to West Coast, Midwest to down south, international is what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. That real flavor of hip hop culture with the emphasis on culture. That being said, today is May 8th, 2022. It happens to be Mother's Day. So, big shout. To all the women out there who are mothers, who brought forth life, who raised and nurtured life, and made us into the wonderful human beings we are. Big shout out and salute to all the moms, all the mothers. No doubt, this next L is for you. You know, I'm getting it right and exact, rolling up that goodness. We have a, a very special guest that's going to be heading on the show in a few the phenomenal, the wonderful, the beautiful Miss Toy from California, from L.A. Um, you probably know her from the hit You Can Do It by, uh, uh, with the legendary Ice Cube. You know, I know you know that joint. And, uh, of course, she's also guest appeared on the Channel Live joint. Put it on a nigga. Put it on a nigga. Put it on a, put it on a, shit it on a nigga. A big shout out to Buddha and Shamella who produced that joint with Channel Live and Miss Toy. Big shout out to Mike City for bringing Miss Toy in our lives and helping us, you know, share some of that West Coast hip hop flavor with us. And that shit was dope. That said, we're going to do what we do. I'm going to throw up a video. Jewelry by Hakeem Green, produced by Ron Lawrence. Out right now. You can stream it on all the DSPs. And uh, yeah, go check it out. I'm going to throw the video up, and while the video is running, please like, share, subscribe, hit that bell so you know when we're going live and direct over here on Madison TV, and uh, follow along. Here we go. Yeah. This goes out to every old head who took the time <coughs> to drop a jewel on me. You know I mean? Little bits of wisdom. Yo, yo, check it out. Listen. If pimping ain't easy, what the fuck is revolution? What? Rappers be spitting straight noise pollution. Uh-huh. Here's a clean glass of water, I show you how to eat the live. What goes around comes, let me show you how to get it. There's something that you hear when it honors that you live. In the street, keep up with your jewels, thug blue like baby did. I try to stay mindful, write something for the kids. Uh-huh. Talking like I walk it, right. rap it how I live. I came up blue collar, strive to be a scholar, but I couldn't. The love, I'll at least gone without the dollar. Compression, the stress is enough to make you holler when the landlord's at your doorstep. The devil's on your collar. Can I drop a jewel? 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 Yeah. Can I drop a jewel? 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 They call me a slacker, cause I won't sell crack for the cracker. Nope. I call women queens and I love the very blacker. Some chicks get it twisted, they'd rather be called bitch. Uh-huh. With the ass in the air like a vice told the kids. Uh-huh. It's a simple lesson, you get what you deserve. Uh-huh. It's life a bitch or just a pimp with a perm. Uh-huh. See mommy tricked out, made a little heartburn uh-huh. or something. She'll forget when it's time to take her turn. Uh-huh. When will the children learn this was better to earn? Uh-huh. But when my niggas put in work, they like to make the metal burn. Uh-huh. End up in the system, it's so systematic. Uh-huh. Maturing candidates, uh-huh. waving automatic. Uh-huh. A product of 
of a project launched in the 80s. Chemical warfare meant to kill the crack babies. Now as the world turns, uh-huh. is it just a story? Because keeping it real got my sons in purgatory. Yeah, y'all like Joel. Can I drop a Joel? Can I drop a Joel? Can I drop a Joel? Yeah. 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 In between heaven and Hades, like earthquakes in Hades, mm-hmm. fat lady clears the throat and plays harps of the baby. They say I'm such a mystic, mm-hmm. lyrics are mythic, but I make it so plain with details and specifics. I'm just gifted like that. I'm young and I'm black, uh-huh. to represent the game, I represent the fact that God helps those who help themselves. So when God helps you, He's really helping Himself. Like every day have purpose, it's a science of life. Every breath's another roll, it's a science to document a moment. Learn from your mistakes, try to learn from others. You get one roll in life, you won't get another. You have to learn the tricks, cause some niggas be on the gas. Want some funny business, but that shit won't make you laugh. I thought he had the bread, was the one that not the weed. I wonder now was coming back if I can't get me. Can I drop a show? 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 Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was Jewelry by your man, Hakeem Green, live and direct. Now we do. What up, JT? Although I spoke of herbs, still nice with the verbs. Fuck what you heard. Big shout out to Sadat X, brand new being collected. You already know what it is. Um, I'm waiting for Miss Toy to hop in the green room. She should be coming up shortly. So, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw in another joint. And uh, we're going to vibe out like that. and. Um, you know, wait for your highness to enter the building. She should be in shortly. She knows what we're over here. Let's see what we got going on over here. What up, Rob? I see you, brother, man. Thanks for tuning in. That's how we're going to do it. This is off the Nameen Project. Do a little joint call New York Rap. Like jewels, I'ma drop a jewel. Makes the money, rappers act like fools. The blind lead the blind, we all blind about the shine. Bad boys dying like Biggie just to go to jail like Sean. I ain't got a diss rapper, these rappers just they self. Ride with Donald Trump like they ain't got knowledge of they self. Knowledge as well, but I keep that thing up on the shelf. Jacob make you freeze, but the feds will make you melt. Everybody wants the belt, who wants the crown in New York? Everything sound like Atlanta, the world clown in New York. They call me niggas the most high, my niggas be the most high. Cause we stay burning bush like Mount Sinai. Soldiers don't die, gangsters don't cry. But when rappers get killed, they go to the place where people lie. 85 is civilized, simple thing capitalized. Five of us realize hip hop is in the sky. Bring it back, that old New York rap. Nowadays, niggas don't want the real hip hop. They really hear that shit meant to kill hip hop. Conceal around the clock, who ill with the Glock. Ten years done past, you still on the block. You still selling rocks, serving fiends, not stop. You worse than a snitch, nigga, you dealing for the cop. Niggas lay traps in the screen trapper die. Like, all we got is battle, we can stay black and die. If relaxing with the lie, but the fact won't lie. Another rapper die, everybody ask why. Take some jump chain, get this up a jump chain. Go do some little crew. Have a pump pain, you can G off with the rap, but you gotta master that guy. Don't try to drop those signs, you better all pump and crack. Serving Mr. Magic, Friday night, rap attack. Bane is somehow a Jersey nigga bringing New York back. Bring it back, that old New York rap. Bring it back, that old New York rap. Bring it back, that old New York rap. Bring it back, that old New York
rest in peace, K. Slay. Big shout out to Media Famous, the number one distribution uh, company rocking right now. Any uh, artists out there, any creatives that want to get their stuff out to these DS DSPs, want to get their stuff out to the, to the public, look up MediaFamous.com for your distribution services. Uh, I, I send all my stuff through media com, uh, MediaFamous.com. Uh, big shout out to them, you know, doing great work. Yeah. So we just on pause right now, waiting for Miss Toy to enter the building. You know, I know she's going going to be on. I know something's happening that's keeping her from, you know, hopping in. But we here. It's Mother's Day. You know, I'm rolling up a blunt. I don't know what you guys got, got going on. JT, what's up? What's up on your end, bro? What you got going on? Talk to me. Holla. Rob, what about you? What y'all got going on in y'all neck of the woods? I see you picked the building back up. Yeah, man. You know, Snoop came through, crushed the buildings. 9-11 happened. Bin Laden flying planes in the buildings and all types of nonsense. New York ain't really been the same since then. You know what I mean? So, you know, I think I could put something together to kind of, you know, lift the hip-hop spirits up in New York City. Yeah, Sixers versus Heat. I know. They rocking right now. Philly putting it on him, I think, right? Philly looked good with Joel Embiid. I can't, I can't lie, you know. James Harden has been a big disappointment, but Joel Embiid seems to be carrying the way. Caught a big win in the last game. Let's see if they can carry out this game. You know, we, we need we need to work hard so we can um we need to work hard so we can keep Doc Rivers' job, you know. So Miss Toy just hit me. She's on her way in. She's trying to figure it out, get it together, you know, but I'm in good company. I got the homies JT and Robert in the building holding me down like they do. I appreciate y'all, you know. You know, it's Mother's Day. I was like, you know what? Let me tap in with a, with a, with a, with a, with a woman, with a, with, a, with a queen, with a lady. I was going to say female, but I already like that word female. It sounds so, so generic, you know what I mean? Female, I mean, but uh, I want to have a, a, a strong feminine personality on the show representing for Mother's Day. So I hit up my homie Miss Toy from the West Coast. You know, we did this record back on Armageddon. Uh, the, the Armageddon album put out on Flavor Unit in 2000. The Channel Live album on Flavor Unit, Armageddon. Off of Flavor Unit, Armageddon. Check that out. Google that. Flavor Unit. Channel Live, Armageddon. But we had this joint called Put It On a Nigga. Put it on a nigga. Put it on a put it on a shit it on a nigga. I thought it might be quite interesting to have a sister come on and, and, and represent. I would play the song, but Universal Music owns the rights to that song, so I don't want this video to get shut down just because I, you know, put some music up that, you know, I didn't own the copyrights to, even though it's my music. You know how it gets, y'all. It gets kind of crazy. You know, y'all, here we go. Here we go. Hold on now. I'm out in LA. I'm saying though, what up? What's up? I'm saying, what you got a jacket on for? You in LA? Isn't it like 85 degrees out there? Either? Hell no, not today. You don't see these palm trees moving and these motherfucking bushes moving and shit. What's up? What up? What up though? Salute. Hot man. Mad isn't TV. It's your girl, Miss Toy, live and direct. Sorry for the delay. You know how we got to get it. No, got to get it I, right. You know, I was keeping I was, I was keeping company. You know what I mean? It was yes. just keeping them in the building, letting them know what time it was. You know, we've been, plot, we, we've been plotting and planning, so it's like the execution. It is what it is. We here, we live and direct. And it's Mother's Absolutely. Day. Yes. So I'm at Mother's crib. you at your mom's crib. Enjoying all the mothers that's here, and uh -huh. that, you know. So, so, how many mothers is in the building over there? It's about five of them over here. Nice, nice. <laughs> well, make sure you give them all a happy, wonderful Mother's Day coming from us over here at Madison TV. I will. I sure will. How's How's your day? It was cool. You know, me and the wife just kept it low. You know, um, I I didn't I didn't get a chance to see my mom this Mother's Day. 
You know, okay. but we, we did speak first thing in the morning, you know, chopped it up with mom. We do that regularly anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, she's, she's doing well. So, you know, me and the wife just decided to stay close to home and, yeah. uh, you know, catch up on Ozark. <laughs> oh, that's dope. Look, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah. It was like earlier when we touched bases, I'm like, time just got, it just started flying. Like, like, Boom. Like, yeah, I, mean, I looked at him, I said, damn. Yeah, no, nah, we was knee deep in the Ozark. I'm laying, I'm laying on the floor. I said, babe, what time is it? She's like, oh, it's 9, 10. I'm like, man, I got to set up for my show. I'm messing around. So we got right. that on pause. Uh, comfortable and shit. Well, that's how yeah. much. It's like one of those days, you know what I'm saying? You know that it's a special day, but at the same time, mm-hmm. it's a comfortable environment. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I'm I'm over here at mom's, it's like. We forget. Uh-huh. We celebrate moms every day. You know what I'm that's, saying? That's right. That's right. That's what it's, we do. It's not just another day. It's when we, we put the pin on the two. You know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> celebrate our existence. Without that woman, we wouldn't be here. Exactly. So I had to I ran her because without her, I, it wouldn't be no mama. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so let's you know. Let's, let's start right back there with mom. You know, to from the, from the beginning, the source. Yeah. Yep. You know, and let's talk about Miss Toy. Yep. Uh, where, where are you from originally? Like, you know, where do you, where do you see the light of day at in this universe? Um, Chicago, South Side. Um, mm. um, Toy was born. You know? um, took me a little while, you know what I'm saying, to uh, reach yes. the West you Coast. Have, <laughs> do, you have head, do you have headphones? No, because you can't hear me, or is it a well, lot of. I, I, I can hear you, but the wind, when the wind blows, it's gonna it's gonna cut you out, but we try to make do. Uh uh-uh, uh, I'm gonna get them out the car. My assistant running right now. Okay. So we'll change that up in a two seconds. Yeah. I, I, you 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 getting it right over there? I see. <laughs> I mean, what yeah, you what you smoking on though? Some OG around his motherfucker. Some OG. OG. Oh jizzle. Oh jizzle, man. Yeah, I, th- I think this is actually. I don't know if this is, uh this is platinum bubba. Yeah, some OG. Okay. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, Chicago first, you know what I'm saying? And then the West Coast. By the time I was in middle school, I was on, by the, you know, West. Um, you know, just making shit happen. Yeah. Making shit happen with um what I got. Mm-hmm. And music was always a part of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Everywhere okay. I went. Everywhere I went. Mm-hmm. You know, I went from my uncles charging their friends 25 cents. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? To watch me dance, to mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, get into the club in LA, trying to get yeah. in when I'm too yeah. young to get in that damn thing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but, but but in Chicago, you said you moved from Chicago when you were 12. Yeah, about 11, right. 12. Right. Mm-hmm. So I mean, did you get the music bug while you was in Chicago? Yeah, I definitely did. My mom said before I could talk, I was singing many Ripperton and Shaka Khan. So yeah, 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 I yeah. really love music, like to a point where I didn't even talk to them and use words. I, I sang. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> She didn't even know I could talk, though. I, my sister said, Toy said she was hungry. She said, Toy ain't said that. She sang that, my hungry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 so I played a cold game as a side, like a singer. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't even, I ain't talking to y'all. You know what I'm saying? I'm a singer to these people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So when did you come in contact with hip hop and rap music? and Hip hop was already in the culture of, you know, middle school with all of the gear and all of the stuff, you know what I'm saying? We all competed with who was going to be fly every day. And it was all influenced by hip hop in our, you know, school dances that we had. Okay. And uh, our school dances, we had like a cool DJ that played all of the, the songs that was out on the radio. And if we made a request or something, whoever was out at the time, you know, you know, we would we would get them to play that. But me and my best friend, we had like a routine that we would do because we listened, you know, after school, we would listen to other rap that wasn't on the radio. You know what I'm saying? And so it was different, you know, songs like DJ Quick and, you mm-hmm. know, N.W.A. and, you know, different people that that was had music out. Mm-hmm. So um, I ended up being in a, a group called Thick and the Girls after, mm-hmm. you know, I am a I appeared in Mocha's that video. I appeared as the other woman in He's My video. And so um, <laughs> said, I ended up being. He said yeah. Mocha's that. Wow, wow. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm part of hip-hop history for real. You know what I'm saying? 
So when, when they used to go to to the studio with uh, Greedy Greg, I used to be with them. You know what I'm saying? Kind of low key in the background and not really saying much. But I already knew that I wanted to do music. I just wanted to pay attention and see what was going on. So God get He blessed me the opportunity to see things from behind the scenes. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I watched the girls do their thing, and I watched you know a certain you know amount of people doing stuff as male artists came out and started mm-hmm. doing more you know, stuff from the West Coast. I'm like, oh, okay, I can do this. But I ended up being in a hip hop group called Thick and the Girls. And, you know, we did a lot of shows, you know, here in LA locally. And it was like a couple of shows where, you know, we always pulled up in a limousine. Like we we really had our little stage stuff together, our outfits and stuff. But I really didn't know the artist that, that well, you know what I mean? She she ended up being like a, um, you know, like to me, like uh, the throwback somebody that wanted to try to do music. And I really didn't look at it like that. I was going to perform, I was going to dance. So when I heard her forget her her lines on stage one time, I was like, oh no, I have wow. to find something else to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna yeah, take yeah, my yeah. talent somewhere else. You can't be kidding, <laughs> you know? take my talent to South, my, take my talent to South Beach on y'all bitches, man. What the fuck is going on here? Yeah. So then I dated a dude, he drove a limo too, you know what I'm saying? And he got to my place one night and I was in there rapping to, um, I think it was, uh, Bonnie and Clyde theme song or something, the instrumental. And he was like, damn, babe, I didn't know you could rap. You know what I'm saying? He said, the next person that I drive for, I'm going I'm to tell him about you, you know? Wow. So then he told, you know, the next person that was in his car was uh, Ronnie DeVoe's uncle, Brooke Payne. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, Brooke Payne, the legendary. Brooke Payne. <laughs> Brooke Payne. Now, you know, I'm gonna be just, I ain't know nothing about Brooke Payne until I saw the new edition joint or, or the BET joint, right? Yeah. And just, you know, Brooke Payne, big shout out to Wood Harris. Brooke Payne was <laughs> is, is, is the Mr. 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 Man. So, yeah. you know, you talk to music industry folks, you'd be like, oh, nah, he was the key. He was the whole, he was the glue. He was the, so anyway, I'm sorry. Hi, Brooke no, Payne hopped in, hopped in the limo. And, <laughs> and then he got, you know, told about me. So then when mm-hmm. I met him, uh, you know, he introduced me to his nephew, Ron DeVoe. Ron DeVoe ended up being real cool. Like, shit, my family always having gatherings and we barbecues and dominoes and cars and shit. So he was like, oh, y'all for real? Like, because we from the Midwest, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he fell right in, like, for real, like uh-huh. one of my family yeah. members. So yeah, Ron, cool they, they, yeah, yeah, like, they, let me ask, can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I ask you a question? What? Be honest now. Be honest now. Do I look like Ronnie DeVoe? No, oh. you don't look like <laughs> No, yeah, I, don't no I don't get no right in a little bit, right? I, I'm right, look, I work, y'all I work can be in a family. Y'all can be in a family. Now, I've got mistaken for Ronnie DeVoe right there. My I'm sure you have. And my little box cut joint. <laughs> it's Ronnie DeVoe. Just like skin. But Ron was real cool. He was like one of my family members. Like if my homeboys, are, you know, somebody come through and they'd be like, is that Ron? Like at your house, like at the barbecue, like literally he would come through, you know what I'm saying? Because we, you know, we, we just, we get down like that. But um, the first time I was in the studio was with them, you know what I'm saying? And I was able to like talk with Ron because he was really going into his rap stuff. And, like, you know, mm-hmm. BBD was about to be established. Mm-hmm. And um, I said, he said, man, I like your voice. Your voice is dope. And I really want to do some shit with you. I want to, you know, go in the studio. So we went to Mosey's studio. He did some work with Tupac too. Mm-hmm. And um, him and his sister, they made, you know what I'm saying? Mosey made a track and we made a song called Lifestyle of the Rough and Sexy that day. And that was my, Ooh, that that was my heart. <laughs> That sounds hard. That sounds like I want to hear that right now. Like, so sexy. No, for real. So we both uh, uh, jammed on that song, and that was like my very first recording. It was, was with Ronnie DeVoe. Yeah, that's legendary. <laughs> Come on, who could say that? Yo, my very first recording was with Ronnie DeVoe. Right. That's a, right. that's a, that's, a, that's so class, classic. I didn't know at the time that that was going to be classic like that. Like, I didn't even really, I was still trying to get my feet wet. I'm like, they don't like me yet. You know what I'm saying? I had to still try to grow my, my name and, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And put, you know, uh, two and two together. Like, you know, it was, it's not easy for females. <laughs> I mean, for women. <laughs> well, uh, let, 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 let's talk about that, though. Um, you know, being a woman, successful woman in the, in the entertainment industry and in being in California, L.A., West Coast, (laughs) West Coast, but you know I'm down here in South Florida. Of course, I'm from New Jersey, New York. But the um, 
how can I say the um, you got lanes for people. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like there's lanes for black people. There's lanes for uh, there's lanes for women. Yeah. In Cal in LA, and it seems that. a lot what more like. difficult a lot more difficult to break out of that lane in LA than in other places. True that. Yeah. Yeah. Can yeah. you yeah. talk talk about that a little bit? How hard was it being a woman breaking? You know, convincing people, you I got this. Right. Um. Had I not been with militia with four guys and pretty much all managers as as men, you know what I mean? I wouldn't have known that there were different plays to play. So you can't play this game all by yourself and think you're going to know. So mm -hmm. in the field, I was able to see, okay, I started out with militia because me and Tan ended up getting called in by uh, Emmanuel Dean. Rest in peace. He uh, did a lot of stuff. Pork chop. Emmanuel D. They they named him uh Po Chop on in Death Row. You feel me? They uh, named I, him that. I, I'm I got I got I got stories about Emmanuel. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm gonna let you finish. Let's yeah, let's elaborate on that because he deserves his flowers. Um, yes, all day, every day. He made a call after me and Tan started doing some shows, you know, local shows. I won a whole fucking like contest over gospel doing my first, you know, uh solo stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, I came in first place i won a big ass trophy so i already knew like after i won over gospel i was not gonna stop rapping you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying so mm -hmm. emmanuel dean made a call and told somebody he wanted to meet with me because he had a group he was working on called militia you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. now i'm not even knowing that he's over there working with dr dre either he just you know i had a meeting with dr dre my team told dr dre we they wasn't gonna break up me and mr tan and so I, my my shit continues that's why i say you never know what's going on that somebody else had a conversation with Dr. Dre about me and my career and my life. You know what I'm saying? During this mm -hmm. time where I'm still trying to find where do I belong? Emmanuel Dean called Red Ant has this, this group. They need a, a, a push, a, you know, like another start, some kind of momentum to get them back amped up about this group. So me and Mr. Tan come with this energy, you know what I'm saying? And they get pumped up and start spending money again. Every time we in the session, we going to get a check. We actually um, helping put this group's album together. You know what I'm saying? I never really was a part of the group, but I, I'm a part of the force while they was able to keep going because they had burn, but then they wanted to make this motherfucker bigger, right? Mm -hmm. So the company called me, you know what I'm saying, after we get on burn, and they like, damn, we really like her. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, well, damn, me and Tan, we not even on the single. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So burn originally has two guys, and so I'm in there talking with the you know, the president, because I'm like, look, as a female, I have to know how to do more than just be a pretty face. Mm -hmm. I sit down in there with them and I ask them, you know, what do, what do y'all think about a remix? So me and Tan could be on it. You know what I'm saying? So when we talking about the remix, we can do it on the same beat, all of that. I just flip the hook. You know what I'm saying? So I tell them burn until the sun burns your eyes. You know what I'm saying? I do a little flip on it. And they like, yeah, we like that. We want to record that. So I tell all of them, I tell Tan, listen. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do eight bars on this motherfucker so we can be on the top of it and we can people can hear us. You know what I'm saying? I wanna just set the song off. You do eight bars after me and we do the, the first sixteen because the song is pretty like a long ass song with these niggas rapping twenty bars and shit. So I'm like, shit, let's let's knock out this eight, you know what I mean? Tan wasn't really with it at first, but then he was like, Fuck it. So we start the song off. So I tell you, before I do, you can do it. I'm on burn telling y'all, I told you we was coming. Come and get it, get it. Sit and hit it. And, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. doing all of that mm -hmm. on the song. And they, they like it. They like, what? Damn. So this is a couple of years before I do. You can do it, though. For real. Uh -huh. 97. But, but, but it's right there. It's right there, though. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that's... Uh, I'm so... Sorry. So yeah, as a female trying to figure out if we gonna have a push with this company, with this, you know, this group, because they're not even our group. You know what I'm saying? We coming in for real as militia, people that's actually operating as a team. We smashing, right? <laughs> and I'm a female. If I'm able to come in here and talk to these presidents to get a remix done, I know I can have some kind of force in this game. I'm not in, in here to date people. I'm here to make some moves. You know what I'm saying? So they had to take me serious and then when i got called to do 
you could do it. Then they took me a little bit more serious. But I think, you know, being serious in the game and being taken serious is two different things. It depends on what you want in this business. And me, I just don't want people to take me as a joke. So every place I've been, I, you know, I've just been trying to represent as the best boss of myself that I could be. So, you know, elaborate on Emmanuel Dean because I love hearing stories about my loved ones. Oh, my God. Um, so, you know, we talked about madism on your show and mm -hmm. being on the other side of the hit, right? Right. Uh, on, on the other side of the hit, you know, it's just, that's when I met Emmanuel Dean through Carl Thomas. Ooh, okay. And um, I love that already. Carl brought Emmanuel Dean out to the East Coast and he basically stayed with us for like a year, year and a half. But the whole time he's telling us about his involvement with, you know, the chronic and, you know, all the stuff that he was doing that, you know, he wasn't really getting his flowers for. And, you know, you know, it just. Uh, you know, when you when you at the bottom with certain people that should be getting they do like you should be getting your do. And you, you sharing war stories. When I was going through a very rough part in my life, the mm -hmm. other side of my career, so too was Emmanuel Dean sharing a lot of these same same hardships, right? And then um, I know his uh, his his son is a professional baseball player. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that, I was so happy for him. I thank him for giving me the opportunity and looking for me. You know what I'm saying to put me on. Um, great, you know what I'm saying, and and that that was the creation of how people got a chance to know me, you know. Emmanuel yeah. Dean, God, and his son carries okay. his name. <laughs> his, his son carries his name, and I think that's so beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Emmanuel Dean Jr. Yeah. So yeah, rest man. in peace, and shout out to Emmanuel Dean, and hmm. shout out to Payne. That was my first manager, Ronnie Devoe, for being my first. You know what I mean? The first. Mm -hmm. Things that you, um, just like they say, the first impression is everything. Yeah. So your first time doing something, you have to give it your all or don't do it at all. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so that's yeah. big. Now, now you talk, you, you mentioned you can do it. And, you know, we heard a little of the flow from that. But can you talk more about that Ice Cube connection and like just how all that came together and that experience? Yeah. Um, Rest in peace to another warrior, Terry Carter. You know, um, he's a West Coast legend. Um, mm -hmm. He had a lot of car, you know, a di car dealership here. You know, just a, a real warrior out here, a, a paid black man out here doing his thing. And his, you know, um, family and I had real good ties. And during the time where I knew him, he was getting ready to start a label called Heavyweight Records with Cube and Mac. And um, so during that time, you know, uh, people thought just because, you know, I'm from Inglewood, Mac from Inglewood, that I would just be, you know, assigned artists to Mac. And those type of street politics, I don't go for it because, you know, I'm I'm a universal as artist. You know what I'm saying? I, I was born in Chicago. I came over here and I know what the gang life is like and how people got to, you know, bow down to certain shit. You know what I'm saying? And um, a lot of God for me, I don't bow down to none of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? It's, if I'm supposed to go this way and God want me to go that way, that's which way I'm going to go. But me, I was thinking bigger for myself. I'm like, it's nothing wrong with being, you know what I'm saying, signed with, you know, to the artists that, that are signed to another artist or signed to a death row or a who banging. That's not my intention to be mm -hmm. signed on a label that's called who banging. Mm -hmm. And um, so um, I had a situation where I, Terry Carter gave me Mac 10 and Cube number because even though he was starting a label, he said, man, Miss Toy, I know who, I know you. I wouldn't know what to do with you. I wouldn't have the right, mm. you know, uh, paper for you or note the note, the information to know what to do. But I know you're going to get you some money. So here go Mac number, mm. here go Cube number. And that's my homeboy. So I'm like, all right, let me just weigh my options. You know what I'm saying? Let me see what's going on. So when I talk to Mac, you know what I'm saying, on the real, you know what I'm saying, Mac is more flirtatious. He's trying to take me out, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm already not serious about that. But, you know, if I sit down with him, we'll see what, what we could do, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when I make a meeting with, you know, Brother Ron to sit down with Q, it's about business. We about to go, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I bring Mr. Tan with me. I mm -hmm. go sit down with Q and 
we start playing our music. You know what I'm saying for Cube and Cube get pumped. He start. He said, "Man, that was dope." He he get he start playing some of his new shit for us. You feel me? So then yeah. he said, "Y'all got another one." So he said, "Hell yeah!" So we yeah. put in another one. <laughs> so then he put in another one. So that's that's our introduction to Ice Cube, seeing him for the first yeah. time. And this is the hip hop energy that I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. As far as you know, I'm new in this shit. But if he liking my music to where he playing his music, asking us to play some more, I'm I'm feeling this shit. That's right. Yeah, 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 of course. So um, after that meeting, nothing happens. But we, you know, uh, you know, we still in the game. We still doing shows. We doing a little bit of things. So mm-hmm. I get a call from K Mac. You know what I'm saying? I just came off the road with the Road Dogs, and I'm here in Inglewood, where I'm at right now. So I I'm in in my mama yard, and I'm like, uh, uh, big, I get big, a call. Big shout out to the road road dogs. Yeah, R P to B R. <laughs> yeah, big shout out to them. Yeah. yeah. So the road dogs, they my homeboys, and I um I come back home and I get a call from K Mac. K Mac like, Miss Toy, where you at? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, shit, I'm in Inglewood. What's up? He said, Q, um, you know, I want you to do this cube, this uh hook, hook for cube or whatever. And I said a hook, and I said, all right, it's cool. Um, I said, where y'all at? So he's like, we in Hollywood. So I said, well. Somebody gonna have to come pick me up. You know, I want to ride up there with them. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to yeah. just roll up there. Like, you know, I ain't doing that. Mm-hmm. So K Mac like, all right, he come get me though. How he said, fuck it, I'm come. So me and him pull up to the studio in Hollywood. Uh, I'm like, damn, it's a gang of people in here. Like, shit, you know, like, I ain't used to that. I ain't used to really being in the studio where it's dumped out like that. Really, I haven't. So I said, all right, I just keep my composure. I'm like, fuck it. What's up, Q? What you want me to do? You know? So then, because we already met, you know what I'm saying? We So we speak and stuff. And so he said, you know, this hook. He tell me about the hook. So he had a joint in his hand. He was like, you want to hit this joint? And I'm like, hell yeah. So I hit the joint. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, fuck it. Let me hit this joint. Yeah, yeah, hit this joint. Uh-huh. And we get up in this booth. So I get up in the booth. And I'm like hearing people in there. They like, do it sexy. Do it sexy. They like talking to me. I'm like, who are these people? Like, my attitude is just like, what is going on in here? Like, it's just too much, you know? So whatever I'm about to do, I'm about to do this shit. And I'm out of here. Hot. That's how I feel. Because I'm like, it's just too much. <laughs> it's too much. So he said, they started the beat, and I'm like, yeah, I like this shit. This shit is fly. Like, this is my first time hearing you could do it, y'all. I never heard it before. I never heard, you know what I'm saying? I did not know nothing about this song. So, um, but I see this, you know, guy that's standing in there with his arms crossed, and he, like, really, really tuned in to what's going on. You know how you could just feel somebody's yeah. energy. I look at him, I'm like, damn, this dude, he really standing here. But after I finished, he was real happy. Like, his, his face just had, like, you know, he was impressed look on his face. So later on, that was the producer, One Eye. That's that was mm. the per- producer who, you know, made a track with, with Cube and them. And uh later on they put Mac on it. But after I did the hook for everybody, you know what I'm saying, I ended up leaving. But Cube said, I like your voice. It's dope. I love how you do your voice. You know what I'm saying? So I was kind of like, okay, well, I didn't know what they was gonna do with the song, but two weeks later K Mac told me that that was the single, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm like, damn, that's wild. I'm like, that is so fucking wild. That's a single. So they didn't even know how to spell my name. They just spelled my name any kind of way. M-I-S-S or some shit. And um, then we had to get to the business. That's where the business at. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that, that uh, you know, nothing, <clears throat> needless to say, that song opened up crazy doors for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I got my, yeah. my, my deal with Universal after that. You know what I mean? After they saw me in that video. I'm mm-hmm. sitting outside, so y'all, you know, it is kind of nah, like winning. We, 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 we rocking with you. It's all good. Okay, good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, <laughs> so how how did you meet Mike City, or when did you meet Mike City? Now, Whoa. And, Damn. And, and, and explain explain our connection to the folks so they know exactly. how, we, how exactly. we know each other. I already talked about it earlier, but, not in the, you know, it's your interview, so you explain it. Give us your version. Okay, well, well, Mike City ended up being a part of my journey some kind of way where it was, I was introduced to him by a management company that I was working with at the time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I just know I was in Texas and I and I see City in the studio and I was talking with him about working with, you know, uh, Universal. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then it's crazy because City already was in tune with me because I really didn't know what mission he was on at the time. I knew that he was working with Sunshine and Carl Thomas, and they weren't. We all weren't successful as yet, but we all had a really good buzz. You know what I'm saying? And um, 
you can do it without, but it wasn't like it was like a big thing to me because I'm still, you know what I'm saying? I'm still like a humble artist trying to figure out what to do. My city made me some tracks that, that blew my mind, you know what I'm saying? And these tracks ended up being on my Universal album. When I did these songs with cities, I wasn't signed yet. I, they were pretty much like our demo, you know what I'm saying, uh, that we had. So I did a song with him called Work a Twist. And I always heard somebody from the West Coast on it, and I wanted Snoop at first, you know what I'm saying? And when I got my deal, it was even better. So we'll wait. I'll, I'll say that, you know what I'm saying, for last. But my city ended up, you know what I'm saying, created some masterpieces for me while I was in the process, you know, of getting my deal. So um, it was a few companies that wanted to sign me. Um, but the main company was Universal. So Universal flew me out to, you know what I'm saying, New York. But this is after I had met City. And um, so I'm like, damn, this is crazy that my city is linking me up with a East Coast group that I'm familiar with. You know what I'm saying? Like, I smoke mad weed, so I know about <laughs> all the fucking people that smoke weed. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, damn, this is fly. So I don't even know if y'all understand. Like, I wanted to, like, I mean, I'm underground, too. At this time, I feel more underground than I am mainstream. You know what I'm saying? In mainstream, I don't feel like there's a lot of people that know of me. So when I got a chance to feature with you guys and, and actually meet with you guys and be in the studio with you at the same time, like that blew my mind because I was like, I didn't want it to be like, I just come in and do a verse and then I don't know y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. No, no, yeah. and, and, so, and that was still it because today, you know, you, everything is digital. You could just record yeah. it and email it and send it. You know what yeah. I mean? Then yeah. it was more, now let me come in, fly you in, you know, be through, meet you. Let's do it together. More creative, mm -hmm. more, you know what I mean? So... Yeah. Yeah, when we was able to talk about it and you were saying that, you know, City, y'all wanted a female on it and City was like, nah, the homegirl Miss Soy. And that's mm -hmm. so dope because that's how I felt about him. Like, if I had an opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to, to work with him again, I will. Because yeah. that's how simple and, and gracious it was. You know what I mean? Every, every producer and every artist situation is not the same. But what I can say about City is full circle. He has always been the same. Um, yeah. Bubbly characteristic person that you always get in the studio even if you're not that good like it's some people that was around me that wasn't that good they learned a lot from city yeah. they always mm -hmm. talked about city more than me you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he's, a, he's a teacher <laughs> he's a teacher he's a natural teacher people like, think a, they know him after one meeting after yeah. one mm -hmm. sitting with him you you promise that you you just know who he is you know what yeah, i mean he's down to earth he has not changed like one bit and um mm -hmm. to see all the work that he's put out is just like brothers amazing yeah and we're yeah. still going but the the track that i wanted to say is save that part for last was that work a twist uh came about after i ended up uh signing my deal to universal and i was on the up and smoke tour at the time you know and the up and smoke tour you know 10 year anniversary of nwa and you know a lot of different his you know history is happening and you know universal is like you know we want to get dre on your album q on your album but at the at the time, I was still in the trenches. I didn't want to be like a groupie trying to ask people to get on my album and shit like that. So I was at E40's uh, listening party or his album release, one of those. And they was playing dominoes, like chilling at the table, literally. I walked up to him and I knew, you know, if I ask him this question, I want to have my A&R on the phone to back me up. So I tell him, I'm at this, I'm at this party where E40 is. If I try to get him to get on this work a twist song is y'all gonna make sure y'all pay his fee, you know? So he mm -hmm. said, hell yeah, if you put him on the phone, it's a done deal. So I hung up with him and I talked to Fody and I said, I'm doing my, my Universal album and um, I would love for you to be on this song called Work a Twist. And he said, all right, that's that's what's up. And I said, you know, he told me his fee and I called the A&R back and I put them two on the phone, you know? And so he made that happen. So I was on the Up and Smoke tour. So now I got a feature from E-40, you know what I'm saying? Waiting in the cut. So I'm on the tour and I'm on the bus, of course. I'm with Cuban and him. He got his own bus, but it's NC Ren, it's Dub C, it's, you know, crazy tunes on this bus. And I'm on, they call this the ghetto bus. You feel me? You know the bus. You know. <laughs> so I'm on the ghetto bus and I got my headphones on and I'm writing to my new <laughs> shit. Because I, I done signed a record deal to Universal, but nobody on this tour don't even know that I'm signed. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Ren see me working and he just asked me one day, like, 
sis, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? I said, I'm writing some songs for my album. You want to be on it? He said, hell yeah. Yeah, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I was pumped. I was and like, swear see, to God. I said, I, what's your fee? I'm finna call my A&R right motherfucking now, nigga. I, you know what I'm saying? When we get off this tour, we can go just get, go in the studio. You know what I'm saying? So I thought of this great idea. And I'm like, you know, that uh, that our names will be banging in the, y'all eardrums for a long time. You feel me? So I made a song called Banging. You know what I'm saying? With me and MC Ren. Because... You know, if I'm gonna do a song with him, I already have. I'm on a song with Ice Cube, then I, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm gonna be in this shit for a long time. You know, so he was with it, and, and what he said on the shit, y'all gotta go, make sure y'all go listen to Banging on my Dad Girl album, so y'all can hear my homeboy tell y'all. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That these bitches ain't writing shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, that that I was coming with that heat back in 2000. You know. So, yeah. you know, he, he didn't lie to y'all. You know what I'm saying? He seen something that, you know, most artists don't get a chance to see because I wasn't up under none of, none of them like that. Mm-hmm. But on the Up and Smoke tour, I was in the midst of a like a musical boot camp, I was telling you. Mm-hmm. And I had to focus on yeah. what I was doing. My job was to go out there and do You Can Do It, but I also just signed my own deal. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I, I wanted to start promoting. And then I got to see you while I was out there. That's you right. Bless that's the right. Game. <laughs> and I was like, that's my homeboy for life right there. If I could be out there in the world and I could get pulled up on by some loved ones, that's always going to be near and dear to me. So I appreciate you for yeah, always. You know love, what I'm saying? love, 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 love. You really? So, you know, when you, when you talk about being on the Up and Smoke tour, right? You mm-hmm. talk about you know, your roots and the, name, the names you've thrown out are like, Great, great, top of the pyramid, top of the game, top of it the is. culture, top of the business. Like, you know, talk about West Coast hip hop and what <laughs> it means to this game, because it's a powerful thing. It's it's so powerful that you know I wean myself in it. I remember being a teenager and listening to Jack and for Beats and saying damn, this is the type of shit I want to do. Like, you know, somebody, you know, nobody had to die with that situation where it was like Ice Cube was able to roast these niggas on the beat. It was tight. He flipped, he changed the track and did this and that. Everybody. And then later on, everybody was able to get back together. You feel me? And and that's where hip hop was exciting for me. So that's what West Coast hip hop was for me. It wasn't just all this violence, but it was just, to be able to say what you really got to say, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and determine your strength out here. Because to, to me, if you show that, you know, these niggas that you weak, <laughs> they going to vote for your ass, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you always, you know, got to stand on your square out here. Yeah, for sure. Anywhere um, but out here. <laughs> yeah, nah, it's, 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 it's different because, like I said, it's, it's sunshine everywhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you know, and it's the from, ocean. It's the beach. It, you it's walk the down ocean. Straight. It's the beach. You know, you know, it's Hollywood, but it ain't. <laughs> but it ain't. <laughs> but it ain't. Got a ass kid but, that but already, you know? Yeah, and then everything's mad far. Yeah. Like, it's, everything's just it's spread out. It's a, a huge... Out here, everything's condensed. When I say out here, I'm down South Florida. Everything's right, condensed. right. <laughs> to New York, same thing. Everything's condensed. Pretty no, um, yeah. Cali is a is a huge area, so even like the way, just how like, we hear a, a NWA, you know, you hear a lot of these these huge artists that did it independently, you know, um, through parties, skate parties was big out y'all way. The yeah. cars, the car scene, right? Mm-hmm. Just the, the, the independence is, um, you know, it's interesting. It's different out here, you know. It's yeah. The vultures, the corporations is right here looking like, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this. Out there, everything is so spread out. That community is oh so important. And when you locked in the community, even when you see, like, say, what Nipsey was doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's just a, another example of a long lot of people who were doing the same thing. Absolutely, you know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's just the West Coast energy has always been a, a, a blessing to hip-hop. You know, definitely renegade culture. <laughs> <for> <laughs> okay, sure. yeah, Re- yeah. Renegade culture for sure, for sure. 
Mm-hmm. For me, story, what, what you got going on now? Like, I highlighted a, a, a few projects yeah. in, my, in my tags, mm-hmm. um, and I was hoping you could just, like, go in on some of them. Okay. Like, um, Only California. My City. Mm, talk about it. My How City. This is our second. Okay, right before the pandemic, my city hit me with the man. We need to do some shit. Put it in the library. So we did an album called Real in the City. Mm-hmm. So boom, the pandemic hit. I I ended up getting a song placement on All American, All America um, TV show series, mm-hmm. and um, I was like, damn. And then the, the the world got shut down. So me and City had this album that was coming out, and we was like, you know what? We're not gonna waste no time. I ended up getting some interviews and things like that. Mm-hmm. And it was like, damn, I was talking about some of the things that was actually even happen, like I knew or something. You know what I'm saying? So this album, Real in the City, kind of, you know, let me see that me and City got our chemistry ain't changed. You know what I'm saying? We right on point. Mm-hmm. Um, last year he called me again, like, uh, let's do this again. So when he sent me this uh, beat pack, I was like on some other shit, and he was too. You know what I'm saying? He he always on something new. So <laughs> yeah. this 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 track was so West Coast that I when I came with the only California, you know what I'm saying? City was like, oh okay, hold up. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna have to do a video to this one. This one, you killed this. You know what I'm saying? So only California. I shot the video here in LA. Um, September last year, so y'all can go to official Miss Toy and check out the video. But just being that it's um, something I've experienced in my life, I know when other people need that kind of help, or if you come to Cali where you need to go, it's it's a roadmap to mm-hmm. every city. You know what I'm saying? And somebody got that information. So if you listen to Only California before you come to California, you will make it back from California. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know I'm saying it's it's spread out, but it's real easy to get lost out there. Yeah, California. yeah. You need mm-hmm. to know where you, you really need to know where you are at all times. Every you know? minute of the yeah, day. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, hand clap. Real facts. Real facts. Um, about hand clap. Fun facts. Um, my niece was about she's 24 now. She was three years old. I was writing to uh my Universal album. Um. And I come across this song, and I'm like, you know what? I need me a song, you know, to make, to make everybody participate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't care what the fuck. And I said, maybe I should make them clap, because I ain't going to try to make nobody dance or do nothing like that. I, I'm too new. You feel me? So I feel like if I make them hand clap, you know, that that's, you know, got to be my signature move. So my niece is three years old. I'm not even knowing every day that I'm doing this song that she's learning the lyrics. I wasn't even paying attention but as soon as it was time to shoot the video hawk uh i'm in a limo and they, they like it your niece look just like you she she needs to play little you you know what i'm saying in the video so i'm like oh that'll be cool so we get in a limo i forget the, uh the cd so i don't have a cd in there to play the song but i said you know maybe she know it so i say boom no 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 i do the beginning of it and we say clap clap so she said i've been peeping your game so maybe just sit back i plan to continue with it <laughs> She started rapping my own shit, right? So we nice. was like, oh, man. Uh-huh. So yeah. The next day at the video, we telling them, you know, the part she going to be able to do. And they like, really? She know the words? Like, that? She, you know, she a little kid. You don't think she going to be, you know, ready? So then they, we was like, all right. So then when it was time for her to get on that damn uh, <laughs> in front of that camera, they started that music. She was nice like, going. I've been peeping your game. So nice baby, going. just sit back. She was that, on. That. Nice, get her nice. little hand claps on her own they didn't tell mm-hmm. her nothing yeah. so um hand clap was really for the kids basically but we need that we need that we need yeah. that for the kids and it is a, a dope dope video it's a really good look y'all go to youtube and check that out i'm just going down like, mm-hmm. a, like a, some of the clips that i caught on miss toy i want yeah. to share share with the folks and Thank you. Some background about yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So look, boy, it's one more. <laughs> one, one, okay. One, one more. It's like a little. It's a theatrical piece. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in the beginning, which was real dope. It's going. The story's going to draw you right in. Uh-huh. But that that's and I. And I. Yeah. And oh, I. Oh wow. Talk about my and boy, I. Yeah. <laughs> my boy Teddy uh, Newton. Uh, you know, he worked with Battle Cat a lot too. Uh, we did a mixtape back in the day and. He came back around full circle with me and said, you know, I got some, you know, music for you, you know. And I'm like, all right. So um, 
when he sent me this beat pack, I'm not even finished releasing all of the songs we did. And I is like, and um, About You is our first two singles. But, and I, man, it hit, kind of hit me. I first, you know, got my new studio. And I was, you know, I started recording some songs and, and everything, but I was still learning my program and how to do everything. But by the time I got to uh, recording and I, uh, I think I was ready. So I, I recorded it one more time just, just to save face because I was like, this feel like a single to me. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Just because of what I was saying and, what, you know, how it came together. And um, so, yeah, I put that video together, too. And um, and we shot that one um, last year as well. So I had yeah, two in a row. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah, no, y'all check that out. And I hand clap only California. Toy, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Official Miss Toy. That, that's a, t- send it to the right place. I got them going. Yeah. There official miss toy yeah you um, yeah um what you got going on right now though what's, what's going on right now you got you got lovely radio you yes got, uh you yes. talk about that you know yes. and, hmm? lovely radio i've been having my show for a minute you know what i'm saying we we uh rebranded and got back on all the platforms so you know y'all can always go to miss com and check us out but every thursday night 7 p.m pacific standard time we bring in some new artists so you know, that own their music and artists that you may heard of because I fuck with a lot of legends and y'all might not know they catalog. So what I do is I bring all the legends in one by one and I, I, I preserve a whole day and a special to play their music. So you can get a chance to not only be, you know, uh, hit with the single that you've been, you know, hit upside your head with over and over again, but you get a chance to hear the body of work that they've worked to to get to that hit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, you know, you don't heard so much music from other people. You just looking for that one song that they did and not even knowing that they have some other jewels in the catalog for you. You know what I mean? So that's what Lovely Radio is about. It's bringing the love back to radio with quality music owned by the artists and producers, which that is unheard of in some places. They don't even play artists, independent artists, uh, much on the radio because, you know, whatever politics is going on in this game. But I'm an artist. And I'm an owner as well. So I want my coworkers, you know what I'm saying, that own their music to get the same, you know, just as any artist. Because you can look us up everywhere else you find every other, you know what I'm saying, number one artist at, right? That's right. So that's right. We should all have the same opportunity. Yeah, that's beautiful. And, um, and new music? New music, of course, of course. On my birthday, 226, you know what I'm saying, I'm the same age as hip hop. Um, I dropped on everything. So Own Everything is available on all platforms. That's the album produced by my producer, k Wise. He's a West Coast uh, producer. You can hear Go Viral on that album. I have a song called Go Viral, and it's a lot of people. And thank you for using Go Viral in your reels on Instagram and TikTok videos. I make these titles for a reason, so you know what I mean? I already know that y'all mm-hmm. want to rock with me and um, get your bag is on that, that album. But Mr. Tan from the song Baby Boy is on there. Mm-hmm. And also Be Fly, the game sister is on that song. So, you know, I I put a lot of people together, you know what I mean? And also, you know what I'm saying? On 420, I dropped Miss Toy Presents the Session. So I have two major albums that's out. That album featuring Baby S, you know what I'm saying? Mr. Tan, Neb Love from the Five Footers, and just a, a slew of other great artists, you know? Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Give the people some shout outs. Man, shout out to you, Madism TV, you know what I'm saying? Channel Live, my niggas, you know what I'm saying? It's all about uh, networking and making some things happen. And I'm telling you throughout your life, if you doing stuff in this music or any part of, you know, uh, making music or making, you know, money, period, make sure you keep your connections tight, your circle small. But um, my goal lab, you know what I'm saying, is uh, pretty much mobile. But everybody who, you know, know me, I call y'all warriors. I love y'all for all y'all support that y'all always give me. We started the warrior movement in 2014 when I started my label. So I am a warrior, you know, uh, continue. I am a warrior part one and two. That's available, MissTwayMusic.com. Y'all go see the catalog. I'm on album number 11, you know what I'm saying? So... And I got a slew of singles that's out. So I'm sure you'll catch up a little oh, bit. Maybe p- by the end of the year, you'll catch up with all my music because I'm going to oh, keep we're dropping. We're going to be in lockstep. We're going to be in lockstep. We're going to be in lockstep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so salute, salute to the queen. Ms. Thank Toy, y'all. Love and you happy so much Mother's Day to everybody that's happy out there Mother's that's Day. doing Mother's Day things. You know what I'm saying? We appreciate y'all. And thank y'all for having me on Mad Ism TV. Sorry for well, being late because I'm usually on all, time, but it's, I'm nah, right on time when it's, it's my It's all people. good. No, it's all good. <laughs> we, 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 we family over here. And I, yes. you, know, you, said, you said you was coming. I knew you was coming. But I also oh, yeah. It was Mother's Day, so I was like, you know what? Let me. You know, uh huh. <laughs> but before you go, let me shout out J T Barlow Wilder, two L's up, my brother. You already know Turbo Flow, mm-hmm. uh, K- Katie, everybody else that tuned in. Yes. This, this is Madison TV. Your boy Hakeem Green. We out of here. Peace. Yo. Peace. Peace, Queen. <laughs>